This is Channels Television's Breaking News. All right, welcome back to CC Nation News. First, we will start off with the weather. Right here in New Albany, which is where I live, it's 77 degrees, no chance of precipitation. Humidity is 32%, and the wind is nine miles per hour. It's also mostly, mostly sunny. Looks like we have some rain on Wednesday, Thursday, partly cloudy on Friday and some rain on Saturday. Also partly cloudy next Sunday and Monday as well. That's the weather. Let's get into today's two news topics. Apparently over the weekend there was a jailbreak that lasted about two weeks. This is the timeline of the 11 day escape between Vicky and Casey White. Back in 2015, Casey White was on a crime spree that included a home invasion, carjacking, and a police chase. 2016, he was convicted and was sentenced to serve 75 years in prison. 2020, Casey White was serving a sentence at the William Donaldson Correctional Facility in Jefferson County, Alabama. There, he confessed to stabbing 59-year-old Connie Ridgeway. He was sent back to the Lauderdale County Detention Center to be arraigned on those charges. And while he was at, while he was at that detention center, that is where he met Vicki White. From sources inside the detention center, they believe that Vicki White and Casey White have had a special relationship for about two years. However, their relationship wasn't physical, nor were they related. Casey Weiss had prior attempts to escape before. So guards came in, they shook down his cell. So they shipped them back to the Department of Corrections. Casey and Vicky White didn't rain in touch via phone over the next two years. Two thousand twenty-two. Vicky White is a widow, no children, and she formed a relationship with Casey White. She gave him extra food and special privileges. Fact, as far as Vicky White's case, she was an exemplary employee. She announced plans to retire, although her paperwork had not yet been processed. She sold her home on April 18th for $100,000. Now is half of the expected market value. She had been living with her mother, Pat Davis, for about five weeks. She also purchased a vehicle under a false name. April the 29th. Vicki told another deputy that she had planned to take Casey White to a mental health evaluation, then would seek medical attention because she wasn't feeling well. According to the sheriff, there was no evaluation or hearing scheduled that day. Vicki then led Casey White, wearing an orange jumpsuit and shackles into a patrol car and drove away. The surveillance video shows Vicki White, she drove her patrol car from the detention center to the shopping center. The patrol car was found abandoned in the parking lot about 11 a.m. The officers at the jail became concerned and tried to reach her, but her phone kept going straight to voicemail. 
And they also realized that Casey White has not been returned to jail. Around 3.30 p.m., officials realized that Vicky and Casey were missing. So the sheriff's office put out an alert. March, March the 1st, they declared Vicky White as endangered and missing. However, the next day, they realized she was not in danger or missing. She was a suspect. Warrant was issued for her arrest, charging her with committing or facilitating an escape in the first degree. On May 3rd, they found a suspected car that she was supposed to be driving. It was an orange Ford vehicle. They found it somewhere in Tennessee. So that led to the authorities in their last known location. However, they didn't know where they were following that. May the 4th, local police were called to the Evansville car wash about the abandoned Ford F-150. Vega was towed away from the premises. Around May the 9th, the U.S. Marshals they released images dated from May 3rd from the edge of the car wash, showing a man believed to be Casey White. Evansville police officer spotted the Cadillac vehicle at a Motel 41 and alerted other investigators. They began surveillance of the motel and observed Vic and Casey while exiting the motel. The police began a pursuit of the vehicle as the fugitives fled north on US Highway 41. Casey and Vic and White, they drove onto a grassy field and parking lot near Anchor Industries. Another law enforcement officer rammed a vehicle into the car, flipping it onto the ditch. The officers took Casey White into custody. The Vicky shot herself in the head and eventually died. So now Casey has been extradited back to Alabama. That was the 11 day jailbreak timeline. My thoughts on this. Don't know why this officer would help an inmate. What kind of spell did the inmate have over the officer? I mean, he is six foot nine. You know, some females like tall, towering, dominating figures. I mean, her husband's dead. She has no children. Maybe she was lonely and wanted someone to mingle with. I don't know. They also had the same last name. Now, multiple articles that I've read said they weren't related, but I think they were. I think they were going somewhere to reconcile their relationship. Now, what was their relationship like during those two years? I don't know. Was it sexual? Maybe. I don't know why a female would bang a guy like him. I don't know why a guy would bang Vicky White. They don't seem that sexually appealing to me, but I guess when you work in prison or serving a prison sentence, and maybe times get desperate. That's my thoughts on this. I thought the escape was well planned out, but the aftermath wasn't. Getting out of jail is one thing. Staying out to nothing, and that's where they fail. It's where a lot of people fail. You know, it really is hard to plan staying out of jail because you have social media, the police looking for you, the public's looking for you. It's one man against the world. In this case, two people against the world. It's really hard to win that case. Next story, Indiana police are still working to identify a boy found in a 
suitcase. So Indiana officials are still trying to identify a child whose body was found last month inside a suitcase in a heavily wooded area. Police believe that the boy is African American and bleeding in between the ages of five and eight years old. He's also four feet tall. An autopsy was conducted, but they didn't disclose the child's cause of death. The child's body was found by a mushroom hunter who was looking for mushrooms. They were asking the public for help. They want to know who this guy is and what happened. My thoughts on this. Um, I don't know who would do this. The person who did this murder is probably evil. They don't probably want the child. You know, it's kind of sad what people can do to other people. Now, how do we solve this case? We do the suitcase first. We find out if the suitcase has any tags or barcodes. If it has a tag or a barcode on it, that's going to lead us to the manufacturer. And once we're at that manufacturer, we can find out if the person bought the suitcase in cash or a credit card. They bought it for the credit card. We can find out who bought it with the surveillance footage along with the credit card timestamp. With cash, it'll be tricky. Or we can find out if the suitcase is bought online. And since this suitcase stands out, maybe it's from Las Vegas. Maybe they should get in contact with the Las Vegas Police Department to find out who made the suitcase. You know, I would go to every major suitcase manufacturer in the U.S. to find out where it's from. There's got to be like a sticker on a suitcase telling us where it was made. Made in Mexico, made in the United States. we got to focus on the suitcase first, then we will find out about the boy. But someone knows what happened. You got to find out. Maybe it was a mushroom hunter. Walks into the woods, find a dead body in the suitcase. Kind of odd, but you know, maybe. But since maybe they've already ruled them out. If they haven't, they probably would have been in custody by now. But maybe there's no evidence to charge the guy. I find that a little bit odd, but. This has been your Cease Nation News for May 16th, 2022.